Jordan, let's go to some of these videos that people seem to be offended by. First one here. Okay, let's, let's take a look at this. Everybody join us in this. What's your thoughts on this? It's just me. Maybe I'm more annoyed about this than I should be, but it feels like extra disrespectful to misgender somebody when they have a pronoun pin on. Like, you know, I know I'm femme presenting. I know I look like a girl, but it's right here. It, like, uh, I have a they, them, their pronoun pin right here, and people still call me a girl. People are still using she, her, and it's like, guys, come on. I'm, I'm not asking for much here. I'm literally just asking. For people to use my pronouns that's all come on do better be respectful it's not hard to be respectful of people's pronouns can we try harder please you know all i'm trying to say here is just it be respectful of people it feels really shitty to have something so clearly dictate what my pronouns are and people still misgender me okay stop let's just stop i can't i can't take it anymore stop right there <laughs> stop right. uh uh jordan let's take a look at what elon musk uh tweeted to, in response to this Here's what Elon Musk just tweeted out. He said, oh, I'm sorry, you go to my screen? Yeah. He said, my English grandmother, English grandmother taught me that it is disrespectful to use pronouns. And it wants you to always use a person's name. Hey, that makes sense. Easy way to avoid conflict. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, John. I don't give a shit what your XXXY pronoun. And by the way, you think I'm sitting there reading your button? All the, all the things you got going on, you think I'm going to read your button? By the way, it's in a very distasteful place because right next to a woman's breast a woman whose breast right i'm not gonna look there for generally speaking so you know this is a this is a weird ask this almost feels like like we're entitled or they, they feel entitled that we should everybody should understand who they are to the world instead of earning it because right now it's starting to seem like there's a lot of back and forth from both sides of I believe in this, I don't believe in this. And I think there's a, a sense of rebellion from either end. I'm like, I'm this. And even though I don't seem this way to you, I'm consider this and respect me. And then the other side is like, well, no, that does not make sense. C common sense says that you're this. So now I'm going to protrude that and I'm going to rebel against that and make a point. So I think there's two sides trying to make a point at the same time that just clashing, clashing, clashing versus this side, understanding, like, you know, there's going to be people in this world who aren't going to call me a her. Right now, I sit here and tell you, Matthew, I, I, I consider, myself a, consider myself a woman. Knowing the kind of circle that I'm around, I'm around I know they're not going to sit there and take that lightly. So yeah. I need to also have grace and understand that there's a mass majority of the people that live in this world that aren't going to respect those pronouns that I want. And then from on this spectrum, is more of... We understand the biological standpoint. We understand the truth that we've grown up with, that we've been taught in biblical standpoints or, or any religious dogma standpoints. Uh, we, know, we, know, we know that truth, but we also understand that there's people out there in this world that are either somewhat confused in certain aspects or they're going through something in their lives that they're trying to figure out who they are as people when it, they come down to yeah. an identity issue. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to be confused, let them be confused. I totally get it. And by the way, I say this in the most non judgmental way, the most objective way. If you're confused, be confused, but don't add on to your confusion with anger because people aren't calling you the pronoun that you want people to call you a pronoun. Don't force it, for sure. Right? As if it's not hard enough to deal with male and female to begin with. Yeah. You want to add on another 50 gender, um, uh, or what do you call it, pronouns? Uh, let's look at this next video here. A day in the life of a childish woman. Um, uh, what's, what's, this, what's this actress name? Um, what's her name? Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea. Right, right. By the way, this is uh, Joe Coy's ex-girlfriend. They, they split this up, is a day uh, in the no way. Yeah, they, they split up uh, uh, last year. So let's take a look at this. They in life of a childless woman. Let's take a look at this. This is a day in the life of a childless woman. I wake up at 6 a.m. I remember that I have no kids to take to school, so I take an edible, masturbate, and go back to sleep. I wake up at 12.30 p.m. and get ready for a busy day of doing whatever the f*** I feel like. I put on my most impractical and stylish shoes since I won't be chasing a child around the grocery store. I go to my fave spot in Paris to grab a croissant. I do a meditation sesh on the plane since I have no screaming kids, allowing me all the time in the world to become enlightened. The weightlessness of my existence has granted me superhuman powers. I teleport myself back home. Then I get ready for a night out with whatever hot guy I met on Raya that morning. I call up a babysitter and tell her that I don't need her since I still don't have kids. Now it's time for a workout, so I hit Mount Everest for a quick climb. I invent a time machine, 
go back in time and kill Hitler. Freeze, you bastard! It's amazing what you can do when you have this much free time. And that's a day in the life of a childless woman. Joe Coy. Joe, that's Joe Coy's ex-girlfriend. What did that man do to her? Here's the thing I know about Joe Coy. Filipino, comedian, single dad, takes fatherhood seriously, raised his son. Uh, I think there was a conflict there of values and principles. Yeah. I think there was a conflict there of, hey, babe, I think I want us to have kids. And based on that video, I don't think she wanted kids. Now she's magnifying that standpoint that she has. And she's just pointing back to him, like, I can do what the hell I want, because I'm a woman. I'm an independent woman. That's, by the way, a lot of women will be attracted to that. Yeah, of course. That she's, that's what she's promoting. The, the, the gloriousness of being a woman without kids. Four women that I've that I've worked with in the last twelve years that I've been doing this, ones right now in her sixties, ones in her fifties, and then two are in her forties. So ten years from now, they were just ten years younger from that. And from around the age of thirty-five-ish, a lot of women consider that like the, their end time. They're done. Mm -hmm. They can't. They can't have any more kids. My mom, through a blessing, she had me when she was forty-five years old. So that that gives some of you women hope. But I. Every single one of them had the same exact response when I said, hey, do you wish at some level, at some point in your life, you would have had a family, someone by your side and a child? And every single one of them said yes. My thing is, I got hurt at a, at a very young age. I was chasing my career, pursuing my purpose. I was in, This was the environment I was surrounded by at a very young age, and I told myself I would never be a victim of this environment. So I chased my career, chased the money, and completely ignored anything that's ever reminded me of my father who hurt me or an ex-boyfriend, ex-husband that hurt me, and I chased that. And now I'm at a point in my life where I wish I had the companionship, but I don't. So although this video is very enticing for a lot of women who are yeah. potentially in the same headspace, yeah. I, I definitely urge you to really look deep within on why, you're, why we're actually here as people. Yeah, I think about the women who love to have kids and they can't. Wow. And, and they look at this video like, you know, think about this. A, a man's job, a man was created to provide, to protect, to prosper, to propel, right? The, uh, right. My belief, a lot of people don't believe that. Um, a woman's job, would you believe a woman's job by God, is to continue humanity through the womb of a woman. That humanity continues through a woman. Like, unless a woman, let's say a woman doesn't have kids, what happens to humanity? It's over. Yep. We're done. We're leaning towards extinction. We're, we're, we're extinct. We're no longer yeah. around. And God had trusted the womb of a woman to continue humanity, to continue legacy, to continue his, you know, his work. And when you're looking at this type of stuff, and, and Chelsea Handler, man, God bless her, but whatever it is that she wants to do, more power to her. Um, but you got to take a look at things like this and look at that type of reaction to not having any kids. You know, what, you know what a real superwoman to me is? Is a mom. I'm looking at Sheena right now. That's a superwoman. Not, and you who's got superpowers? A mom. A, a mom is overworked, underappreciated, overwhelmed, underpaid, it's the toughest job in the world to be a mom. You're running a business, you have a career. Shoot, just being a stay-at-home mom. Some people, some ladies come to our office, yeah, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. I look, pick your head up, what do you mean? I'm just a stay-at-home mom. You, you know how honorable to be a stay-at-home mom is? In other words, your husband did something right Yep. for you to be a stay-at-home mom. Don't think yourself any less because you're a stay-at-home. You're doing one of the most honorable things in terms of raising a family, building a home, and one of the greatest things a man can come home to is a woman that, that loves him and, and, and honors him. And that area of their life, that aspect is, is taken care of. It's a great position to be in. I call that being a domestic engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call yourself just a stay-at-home mom. You realize that you're doing for these children what no other person in the world can do. Zero. You're doing it. You're the mom. And so I say this. I was, just, I was a single dad. You know, and, and I remember, I remember at nine years old, I walked in my son's room, he's, he's oh, belly aching. And I said, Ruben, what's, what's, what's the matter? I said, and this, you know, uh, he hadn't seen his mom for a minute. So how come my mom doesn't want to see me? No matter what I did in his life, nothing can ever replace the presence in a child's life than a mom. That's a superpower. I'm looking at my mom right now. She's seven years old. My mom, you see my mom, she's at the office. What yeah. does my mom have to do? At the office, she just loves being around the environment. And I look at that woman, she's raised my, my sister and I. She's got grandkids. These human beings are around because she chose to engage the superpower mm. of being a mom. And now even greater superpower, being a grandma. So listen, man, I, I don't agree with what she's promoting. But at the same time, there's no, no, no judgment on her. She, you know, she's doing her thing.
But to the ladies out there, just want to let you know how important you are. And uh, yesterday was our anniversary. And people wonder, well, Matt, why are you at the office? He says, you know what? If you live your life the right way, every day is your anniversary. You live your life right, every day is your birthday. Every day is Mother's Day. Every day is Father's Day. Every day is Thanksgiving. Every day is Christmas. Shit. Every day is daggone Black Friday if you handle your finances right. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.